Hey, how's it going? It's Justin Spencer here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the cost of a luxury lifestyle in Manila, Philippines for 2023. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the top 10 tips that I have that basically can allow you to have the highest quality of life and standard of living as possible while spending the least amount of money. And I've lived in Manila now for about eight months, so I've gained a lot of experience. I've learned a lot of things that I would have never possibly learned from Google or ChatGPT. These are things I'm gonna share with you in this video that you can only learn if you talk to somebody who's actually become a local or has lived and spent a lot of time in a particular place or city. So let's dive right into it. So for those of you who don't know, I used to live in Lincoln Tower at the Presidium at Rockwell in Makati City. I slid over to Brio Tower, which is right across from the Presidium at Rockwell. Still in Makati, this is a DMCI developed building. The last one in Rockwell was by the Rockwell uh, developer. So uh, as far as expenses, let's dive right into these. So my rent for this 45 square meter place is 25,000 pesos. I rented it unfurnished and uh, that comes out to about 455 US dollars per month. Is my condo considered luxury? I definitely think it is. My view is out of control. I have a very large balcony. I, it's, a, it's a one bedroom space with one bathroom. My girlfriend and I live here. My girlfriend is a Filipina and uh, the space is very nice. I've made it very nice. I'm going to do a separate video that you can check out where I show you everything that I purchased, why I purchased it, how much it cost, why I went with unfurnished. If you go with unfurnished, you're going to save about 10,000 pesos per month on average. So if this place was fully furnished, it would have probably ran me about 35,000 pesos a month. There would have been an extra $170 per month. So I'm saving about 120,000 pesos per year or about 170, 175 US dollars per month times 12 is what I'm saving by having bought my own appliances or my own stuff and furniture so yeah I just recently purchased for this place uh, two inverter type Panasonic air conditioning units I really wanted to go with the LG models for the window units because I was actually gonna get Samsung split air conditioners but that, that's a whole separate video it didn't work out I, I could have forced it to work out but I didn't have the patience but so at any rate because both of my Panasonic window air con units are inverter type I'm uh, guessing that my electric bill is not gonna be greater than 6,000 pesos a month, which is 109 US dollars per month. Now, when I was in Rockwell in a 37 square meter place, I had a carrier split AC unit and the electric in that place was on average 4,200 pesos a month to 4,800 pesos a month, which is about $85 to $95 in that range for electric before with a split type, but split types are usually very efficient if they are inverter. I have two uh, window air conditioning inverter units in here that run off and on periodically. So I'm guessing about $109 a month for electric. It's very hot in the Philippines, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit on average on a daily basis, or like 80 plus, I would say. And you pretty much need your air conditioning running nonstop. Uh, so yeah, my water bill, I am assuming will be about 33 US dollars per month, which is 1,800 pesos per month. And that's for me and my girlfriend. Okay, so the gym is not included in the uh, Rockwell where I was staying at. That was 35,000 pesos a month. No balcony, 37 square meters. So this unit is uh, cheaper, larger, but the gym memberships are not included. So for my girlfriend and myself, it's 1,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos. So each per month for, to use the gym here. And the gym here is nowhere near as good as the gym in Lincoln Tower, just so you know. Lincoln Tower had seven or eight machines. It was very cold in there, air conditioning, very good music playing all the time. And uh, here it's uh, the roof. So there's an amazing view on the roof deck, which is where the gym is here. But there's literally two machines instead of like seven or eight. Um, I really miss having a leg press so I can do my legs and my calf raises on the leg press and uh, the other machines in the squat rack and everything they had at Lincoln. But real tower is still very good. So $36 per month for my girlfriend and myself, 2,000 pesos for that. So transportation and food, I spend about 12,000 pesos per month on grab rides, which is about $218. Um, is this normal? Well, it depends on who you are and what you do. I'm a YouTube vlogger. That's what I enjoy doing. So I'm, I'm using Grab all the time, almost every day. Um, so if you're in BGC, you can walk pretty much everywhere you want to go. Unless you're going to Makati or somewhere else that's far, you would take a Grab ride, obviously, unless you uh, prefer to get on a motorbike or whatnot. So that's that's my expense for, for that. Groceries, uh, 25,000 pesos per month, which is 454 US dollars per month. That covers myself and my girlfriend. 
takeout food, 10,000 pesos per month, $182 for takeout food because I do like to have the pickup coffee or once in a while I like Starbucks or the coffee bean or uh, one of my favorite places to eat lately is uh, for takeout is the Salad Stop. Salad Stop gives you amazing portions for food. It's also pretty darn healthy gauging by observing what's inside of it. Um, they make really good salads and wraps. I'm a huge fan of wraps and they put like chicken thigh, oven roast and chicken. Yesterday I had like a seared tuna wrap um, and they, they threw some nice uh, dressing in there. Lettuce to me, that's fantastic. It was like six or seven dollars for that big wrap and um, that was including delivery. So for insurance, I'm spending one. Th I'm spending 14,650 pesos per month, which is $266 per month on my health insurance coverage plan. Uh, it's through Geo Blue. It's uh, associated with Blue Cross Blue Shield. And my philosophy on spending a lot of money on health insurance if, as an expat from America, from the United States, my thinking is if I spend a lot of money on a policy that covers pretty much everything and has a low deductible, I'll probably never need to use it. Um, if I got like a very high deductible, very low premium policy, I think the universe has a sense of humor and just likes to like turn my life into a comedy skit. Sometimes that's how I feel living in Philippines. So I think I would be more likely to actually need to use the health insurance if it were a lot cheaper and the premium was a lot less. So I don't really plan on changing that. My coverage with Geo Blue uh, for 266 is a 31 year old, healthy, no pre-existing conditions, uh, non-smoking, uh, white Caucasian male. Mine's 266 a month and I'll, I'll try to recall my deductible so I believe my deductible is I'll have to double check and put it on the screen here for you I'll, I'll double check so I don't get the figures wrong but I also have United States coverage if I need to get treated in the US but anyway let, let's move on for the sake of the video I don't want to turn this into an insurance video I can do an insurance video for Xbox later and why I went with Geo Blue versus uh, Sigma or the other options out there so life insurance I spent $20 a month on life insurance through State Farm it's an American uh, insurance company it's 1100 1100 pesos per month that gives me the term policy so it will expire when i'm 45 years old but it covers me until then and uh god forbid i, I hope i die when like 95 or something but i just have that for my own peace of mind uh my my parents will receive a split of like 185,000, so 90,000 a piece or something just to settle the affairs or whatnot. Identity theft insurance, I, I don't enjoy paying for this, but I uh, I have it, so hopefully I'll never need to use it. It's $20 a month, 1,100 pesos a month. That's through LifeLock. Uh, it's supposed to give me a million dollars worth of identity theft coverage. Streaming services like Netflix, uh, YouTube Premium, Amazon Prime for the Amazon video portions or whatever else I have, uh, ExpressVPN, that's, that's 62 US dollars per month total for all those and that's 3,415 pesos miscellaneous I put miscellaneous 15,000 pesos a month or 272 US dollars there's there's things that I just I buy that I don't account for that and same with you that you might visa renewal fees for an American expat who keeps renewing his tourism visa which is what I'm doing I'm renewing my tourism visa uh, I get two months at a time from the Makati office and uh, it's 2,500 pesos per month uh, every time to buy those uh, on average I'm spending about 45 dollars per month so that brings the grand total right now for my uh, luxury lifestyle in manila for an american expat to two thousand two hundred and three dollars per month and if you're a single man uh, you might spend less than this okay and that's 121,400 pesos so here's some more things to know like my girlfriend is very inexpensive my, I have a Filipina girlfriend she has her own business she has her own uh, income source I pay for her gym membership you know I share the food I buy with her so if I was a single man I don't think my bills would be too much less I'm sure they would be a little bit less I mean you know so here's some more things to notice my haircuts are free because my girlfriend trained before on how to cut hair professionally so my girlfriend can cut my hair uh, for as far as professional teeth cleanings I do that myself I just bought on Amazon the same exact tools that the dentist use and if you're a dentist or hygiene professional watching this you're gonna laugh because trust me I think at least once a year I will go like get an x-ray or whatever and get like a professional dentist to clean my teeth but I have the plaque scrapers and I have the little reflecting thing and I can do I can get the plaque out from the, the areas where it builds up in my teeth I've been to a professional dentist at the time so I don't really pay for teeth cleanings teeth cleanings in Philippines and Manila are gonna be between 700 pesos up to 50 1500 pesos for a teeth cleaning. Here's here's some interesting thoughts for you. So my monthly expenses in Arizona when I was living in Phoenix were $4,468 per month. Okay, so here they are $2,203 per month. When I was in Arizona, 
they were $4,468 per month. So that being said, so my expenses are 51.7% less in Manila, Philippines compared to Phoenix, Arizona, where I came from. Um, so the square footage of my housing also was, uh, I, I was uh, basically, I, I owned a house. So my square footage of housing went from 3,050 square foot, uh, also including my garage, down to 485 square foot. So I downsized tremendously. So my expenses went down, but so did the square footage I'm actually occupying. My home mortgage was $1,860 per month. My current rent is $455 per month. So my rent slash housing expense is 75.6% less being in Manila versus Phoenix. However, I'm renting 84.1% less space slash square feet. So that's also, I'm just, I have a much smaller place. But um, I also am in a city now, for, which is way more expensive per square foot versus I was in the suburbs before, which is tends to be less per square foot or per square meter. So it cost me a dollar and 64 cents per square foot for my rent in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's costing me 94 cents per square foot for my condo in Makati, Philippines. So also Makati is the most expensive place to live in the Philippines in the entire country. Uh, BGC is the other place that's also very expensive. So just more fun facts for you. Also, I want you to know that when I told you my uh, expenses for uh, Manila and Phoenix, those were not including flights. Uh, those were not including what I pay my accountant or any of my other business expenses. My business obviously generates revenue, it generates profit, and it pays for those expenses. So there's literally no point in me including those in this video because it's a cash flow positive thing. Uh, we were just looking at where the cash uh, losses go from expenses when we were doing this. So what are some tricks to save money while living in Manila? Well, I got 10 good ones for you. Let's check those out. The first tip is rent an unfurnished place and then furnish it. You'll likely equalize the cost difference in six to 12 months. I told you earlier on in this video, on average, you should save about 10,000 pesos, which is about 175 US dollars per month if you get a fully unfurnished place. So in this place, I negotiated with the landlord and uh, it wasn't fully unfurnished. It wasn't completely bare. So I arrived and the range hood was there for cooking and uh, the hot water heater was already here and installed. And then he put in two air conditioning units that were brand new. They were TCL models. And unfortunately, the window provisioning is so small in my Brio Tower unit that he was forced to buy uh, small ones. He spent about 12,500 uh, 12, pesos on each unit. Um, they're about $210 us each they were horribly loud i insulated them and they were still horribly loud it sounded like somebody had a lawnmower being started in the condo so i didn't sleep the first week here too loud too noisy for me probably 58 to 62 decibels i'm guessing okay so these are new the new panasonic inverter ones these ones aren't really sexy to look at but they are super quiet and they work really well and they have a remote as well and uh, I'll, I'll dedicate a separate video to uh, overcoming problems like that however um so i ended up sp i ended up spending way more than i expected to i dropped twenty-seven thousand pesos on each unit i spent fifty-four thousand pesos on two different inverter types that fit my very ridiculously small provisioning i wanted to get the lgs like they wouldn't fit they were too wide uh, but now they they are very quiet and more energy efficient, probably cut my electric bill in half, and they're way, they're way more quiet. So, but I had, to, I had to spend $968 plus delivery to do that. So I also bought a refrigerator through LG, or uh, it was an LG brand. Then I realized I didn't measure the height, I only measured the width, because it's an American, you never measure the height for a fridge, because the cutouts are so much bigger in America. So here I was like, oh crap. So I had to sw switch my LG fridge to a Panasonic last second, and I was able to do so. It'll probably take me 12 months to get my money back. So I, I probably spent 120,000 at least, probably more. I didn't expect to have to get air conditioning units. That was an unexpected 54,000 peso expense. But anyways, tip number two, have your groceries delivered if you're not within walking distance to a grocery store so that you're not paying for two ride fares going back and forth to the grocery store. It's a simple tip. Purchase a motorbike and drive yourself everywhere. I don't do this, but you could. Um, you would save a lot on grab rides if you just bought your own motorbike, or you can take Oncos or Joyride. Those are cheaper options than grab. They're just not as quick and as efficient. So I don't, I don't take those lesser uh, options. And obviously riding on the back of a motorbike is far less safe. You know, God forbid there's a collision or something. I'd really rather be in an SUV than on the back of some dude's motorbike. So I'm not trying to save a dollar, which is like, you know, just, just to put my life in extra danger. Um, I value my body and my age too much and I have just too much to lose. So I take grab rides and pay extra. Purchasing a car makes no sense unless you're going to be driving very far distances often. Like if you live in the suburbs, then you have to drive to the city of Manila every day or something. 
that would make sense to own a car, but I don't own one to recommend one if you're an expat. Tip number five, pay for any services with an annual plan if, if you can, so you can cut your costs by 20% or more. That's just a really basic tip. You obviously get a, a few, you usually get a discount for paying a, a bunch of months up front. Tip number six, buy inverter air conditioning units. They're way quieter and they cost way less. The regular non-inverters that are manual, that are standard, they are like much cheaper, but Let's say, for example, like let's look at the cost analysis of the, uh, the non-inverter ones that were here before I replaced them. So there were two TCL models. They were 12,500 pesos each, about 210, $215 each. The electric bill probably would have been 10,000 to 12,000 pesos a month, which is about 180 to 220 bucks a month is what the cost would have been. I can say with a large amount of confidence that that's a 25,000 expense for two units. So if you just double that and you pay like 50K plus for two inverter units, you're probably gonna save like three, four, five K ish per month. Within the first nine months, you're probably gonna break even just on electrical savings. So it makes no sense to, to buy regular units as opposed to inverter. Plus the regular units are super loud. You're not gonna be able to sleep. So what's the point? And like, you, I, I tried sleeping for, before I replaced these, I was using a fan for like a week as a temporary band-aid solution. And uh, it was so difficult to sleep with just room temperature air that's like 85 degrees is blowing me in the face. I woke up and my eyes were like so heavy, but now I sleep like a baby. Um, it's ice cold, it's super quiet. My sleep's gotten much better, so. Tip number seven, have a friend or a girlfriend cut your hair if they know what they're doing. I mean, haircuts here are very cheap. They're not expensive, depends on where you go. I mean, if you go to like Power Plant Mall, it's gonna be a thousand pesos for a haircut. If you're a guy, it's like 20 bucks. But if you go to like somewhere on the street or like a, you know, like not like a high-end mall, if you go to like um, a shopping center plaza, like a smaller one, it'll be like 500 pesos or something. I think I paid five, uh, I think I paid three or 400 pesos at David's Salon, for example, one time to get a haircut. So buy dentistry tools and do your teeth cleanings on yourself if you feel comfortable doing that. or, or just have a professional do it like once every six months if, if you don't like keep your teeth clean by a, a, a hygienist professional you can have very expensive and very painful teeth problems and uh, i don't ever want to experience that i doubt you do either so okay tip number nine live within walking distance of major retail centers so you don't have to pay for transportation so those grab rides can get a little expensive depending on the time of day and they also takes forever to get where you're trying to go between four and eight o'clock every day of the week here i try not to leave my condo from 4 p.m to 8 p.m if you want to eat dinner at a nice restaurant and you need the transportation just wait until after 8 p.m to book your grab ride because I, there's so many times at like 7 like 6 30 p.m or 7 p.m i tried to book a grab from like makati to bgc i was unsuccessful <laughs> like i could not get a driver until like eight o'clock anyways like it would just sit there and ping like sorry there's no driver so that's vanilla okay so tip number 10 you can get hbo netflix disney plus apple music youtube premium and a bunch of other subscriptions as a philippines uh resident even if you're a foreigner you just need a you need a philippines bank account i'm in the process of getting one right now so hopefully that goes well and succeeds the, they need so much paperwork but yeah so like for example i just checked like two days ago if you are a philippines resident and you have a a, a netflix subscription like it's 500 pesos which is like eight or nine dollars a month for, for netflix versus i'm paying 21 dollars and 65 cents per month uh, as a united states uh president or citizen or whatever so everything's pretty much 50 percent less like there's an hbo go hbo disney plus they're all basically like 30 to 50 percent less because you could cut your streaming services bill in half if you just cancel your united, your united states like resident based ones and just do philippines resident based but you need a local bank account or a girlfriend who has gcash because i don't think foreigners can get gcash and um i'll pay maya i've tried so many times i've I've tried to get verified like six times and uh, they keep telling me that it just doesn't work. So, but yeah, just to do a quick recap. So my monthly expenses, luxury lifestyle, and as of 2023, at least $2,203 per month. I say at least, it could obviously go above that depending on if I need extra grab rides or I go to fancy restaurants, at least 121,400 pesos per month. I think that that's pretty much the bare minimum for an American expat. If you're from another part of the world, you know, if you're a single man, if you don't need to have nearly those amount of transportation bills, is it possible to live on $1,000 per month? Yes, it is. I personally would never want to do that. Uh, I would want to live on at least two grand a month, 2,000 uh, US dollars a month. I'm not trying to be condescending for any of my uh, my local Filipino uh, friends here. I love you guys. Um, but when you when you come from the United States, it's like you're just used to spending it like three or 4,000 a month to live anyway. So we would want to probably spend at least 2,000 a month here. Just just so it's, you know, it's, it's what we're used to, you know, it's, um, so anyways, yeah. I hope you got a large amount of value out of this video. About 80% of my subscribers or viewers, rather 80% of my viewers are not Subscribe. I love it if you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the type of content I produce if you like my vibe if you like my energy and uh, yeah hit the like button if you like the video and I'll catch you on some other videos bye for now and have a great day